ओम अज्ञान तिमीरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुरून मीलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टं स्थापितं येन भूतले स्वयं रूपः कदा मह्यं ददाति स्व पदांतिकं नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्णप्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदांत स्वामिनीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो फॉर डिवोटीज हु हैव जस्ट जॉइन अस ऑन द फेसबुक ऑडियो लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट जस्ट अ क्विक अनाउंसमेंट that there were so many devotees on the conference call today uh, that i think the upper limit i believe was uh, already uh, reached and we somehow couldn't join in the conference call ourselves we tried to join in on the conference call uh, on the um, teleconference on the phone uh, but uh, there was some technical problem and the the call was getting dropped so this is just a uh, uh, humble apologies from our side that we are not able to facilitate the audio class over the phone due to these reasons and we wanted to keep uh, respect of everyone's time because so many devotees on the conference call are giving their invaluable association and time during these uh, times of difficulty and uh, crisis in the country so uh, we really want to appreciate the Uh, the loving affectionate presence and participation of all the devotees who are participating in this discussion so if you know your friends your family your relatives uh, your mm, devotional uh, partner spouse your children etc who are trying over the conference call on the phone and if they are experiencing difficulty you can kindly uh, tell them to uh, join us on this facebook uh, audio live broadcast so in that way we all can be together in this discussion on the fourth session of our ongoing series on the beautiful wonderful pastime of gajendra from canto 8 of shrimad bhagavatam chapter 1 2 3 and 4 so till now just a quick recap in session number 1 we discussed about the glory of shrimad bhagavatam with respect to one of the initial invoking invocation verses of the shrimad bhagavatam which is canto 1 chapter 1 text 2 we had a um, extensive detailed uh, analytical discussion on day 1 about the glories of shrimad bhagavatam and how we can overcome uh, so many inauspicious tendencies by cultivating this culture of hearing reading and contemplating on the shrimad bhagavatam in our second session we discussed about the 10 subject matters of the shrimad bhagavatam and we mapped them on the basis of the commentaries of the acharyas how the 10 subject matters uh, relate to the 12 cantos of shrimad bhagavatam then we left off at that point to say that the 8th canto deals with a subject matter called as manvantara manu is the root the fountain head of mankind and antara means the distance or the difference or the in in very simple words the rule time the time the the time one manu rules on his uh, responsible post as manu so manu antara becomes manvantara so then in the third session we spoke about how different manus have been described in the first chapter of the eighth canto and how parikshit maharaj is loving this flowing description by shukadev goswami who was the first manu and what was the very specific incarnation of the supreme lord in that manvantara then who was the second manu the third manu the fourth manu the fifth manu the sixth manu and the current seventh manu the manvantara the vaivasvata manvantara that we live in well while shukadev goswami was describing the different incarnations of the lord appearing in every manvantara very specifically 
during the description of the fourth manvantara hmm, we find the mention of this in canto 8 uh, shrimad bhagavatam chapter 1 um, <clears throat> text 30 tatrapi jagne bhagavan harinyam hari medhasah hari iti ahrito yena gajendro mochito grahat translation also in this manvantara the supreme lord vishnu took birth from the womb of harini the wife of hari medha and he was known as hari hari saved his devotee gajendra the king of the elephants from the mouth of a crocodile so it's interesting when parikshit maharaj listens to this point the mention of hari in the fourth manvantara appearing uh, to save gajendra from the very ferocious jaws of the crocodile at that time our parikshit maharaj being very inquisitive asks a question so that starts off the pastime of gajendra very specifically from text 31 so if you have an access to your Srimad bhagavatam copy or an online copy of the veda base it is highly encouraged that we can read together so that it's a beautiful journey of study of Srimad bhagavatam together we listen and we read together so as far as text 30 is concerned it's very interesting to note that shukadev goswami mentions and wraps up the whole pastime in one line he says hari iti ahrito yena gajendro mochito grahat grahat means from the mouth of the crocodile very specifically from the grips of the crocodile graha gajendra mochita gajendra became mukta uh, mucha mocha means liberation so the word mochita is very similar to the word mukta liberation so gajendra got liberated grahat from the jaws of the crocodile from the grip of the crocodile how did that happen harihi iti ahrito yena yena means by gajendra gajendra did something by which he was liberated what did he do ahrutaha very interesting he called out Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, in this commentary, he says that this word Ahrita is the most important word in the whole verse. It's interesting because Shukadev Goswami talks about the appearance of Bhagavan. He talks about the parents of Bhagavan, Harini and Hari Medasahar. And then he talks about Bhagavan, Hari. Then he talks about the problem, Graha, crocodile. He talks about the devotee, Gajendra. But in the whole verse, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, the most important word is Arutaha. Arutaha means to call out. And whom did he call out? Harihi Iti. So it's interesting. Whenever a word has to be focused on, you mention the word and then you use the word Iti. Especially names. Hmm? Like in the Mukundamala Stotra, after every name of the Supreme Lord, the word Iti has been used. Shri Vallabheti Varadeti Dayapareti Bhakta Priyeti Bhavaluntana Kovideti Natheti Naga Shayaneti Jagan Nivaseti Alapinam Pratidinam Kuruma Mukundaha. In the first verse of the Mukunda Malastotra, Kulashekra describes different names of the Lord. And between two names, he uses the word iti. Shri Vallabha iti. So when it's put together, it becomes Vallabha plus Iti becomes Vallabheti. Shri Vallabha Iti, Varada Iti, Dayapara Iti, Bhakta Priya Iti, Bhavaluntana Kovida Iti, Natha Iti, Nagashayana Iti, Jagan Nivasa Iti. So he uses the word Iti after every name to give emphasis on the name. And Alapinam Pratidinam Kuruma Mukunda. Oh Mukunda, may I every day do the alap alap means to sing daily may i sing these names which names the names mentioned in the words so the word iti it's it's culture it's tradition to use the word iti after the specific name has been uttered also we find <clears throat> in um, govinda damodara stotram of bilva mangala thakur bilva mangala thakur names different names of the supreme lord and every verse ends with govinda damodara madhava iti iti means thus these names 
So here also Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is commenting that Hari Iti Aharitaha. The most interesting phrase here, the most important phrase here is Hari Iti Aharitaha. This is text 30 for those who are just joining us on Facebook audio live. Uh, just to put things in perspective, we are discussing Canto 8, Chapter 1, Text 30, very specifically the context of Gajendra calling out to Sri Hari and making the best use of this bad bargain. Hmm? Gajendra being caught by the crocodile was not uh, under his control. It was not something that he was aware of. But what was in his control was his response to the situation. Now, this is a very interesting lesson for all of us. What happens to us, maybe according to our Prarabdha Karma, according to what has been destined by our past activities. But what actually defines us is not the situation that we are in, but the response that we give to those situations. There have been so many elephants who may have been in the past, present or in the future will be attacked by other animals. But how many of these elephants find their way, crawl their way into the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam? There may be many women in the past or in the present or in the future who unfortunately may have been uh, touched by another man. But how many of them are lucky and fortunate enough to find their way into the pages of the Mahabharata or the Srimad Bhagavatam like Draupadi? So what happened to Draupadi by the hands of Dushasan? And what happened to Gajendra by the jaws of the crocodile were out of their control. But what made them actually glorious and what made them eternally famous in the pages of the Shastra is the amazing, amazing call and the amazing, amazing surrender that they exemplified in such a pressing time. So what happens to us doesn't define us, but how we respond to what happens to us definitely uh, defines the depth the fertility of our devotional practice. So here Chakravarti Pad is saying, although the Supreme Lord Bhagavan has been described, the parents of the Lord have been described, the devotee Gajendra has been described, the problem, the crocodile has been described, but the solution which explodes hmm, into a whole uh, episode in the Srimad Bhagavatam is Hari Iti Aharita. Aharita means to call out in a desperate mood of helpless surrender. So because Gajendra called out Hari Iti, Iti means thus, this name. He called out Hari. He called out Hari. Oh, immediately there was help. So when Parikshit Maharaj heard this, that someone called the name of the, the Supreme Lord and got released, this is what attracted Parikshit Maharaj's attention. Parikshit Maharaj heard so many other incarnations, so many other Manus, in fact, in the past also, there are some chapters in the Srimad Bhagavatam which just talk about kings and their wives and their children and one generation after another. But we don't see Parikshit Maharaj stopping Shukadev Goswami every now and then and saying, please elaborate on the life of this king or that king. But wherever Parikshit Maharaj sees a scent of pure ecstatic devotional presence that, inspire, that inspires in his heart the ability to uh, stop Parikshit Shukadev Goswami in his ambrosial flow of narrative description and ask uh, the right questions. Also, we see when Sutta Goswami is speaking to Shauna Kadirishi, the same culture has been seen. When Sutta Goswami starts speaking about uh, Kali Maharaj torturing uh, Dharma as the bull and uh, Bhumi as the cow, and Parikshit Maharaj coming and uh, punishing Kali Maharaj. When Sutta Goswami is speaking this Hari Katha to Shauna Kadi Rishi, how Parikshit Maharaj uh, punished. Uh, immediately Shaunaka and others, they got, uh, uh, they came on the edge of their seat and they said, wait a minute. Why didn't Parikshit Maharaj profusely punish Kali? Why didn't he, why did he just drive Kali to the uh, Dutam, Panam, etc. The places where there's meat eating, intoxication, gambling and illicit sex. So we see even there, when Sutta Goswami is speaking, Shaunaka and other rishis are not uh, relaxing. It's an active, dynamic process of hearing and inquiring. Hmm? And in fact, there are verses where in the Shastra, Parikshit Maharaj to Shukadev Goswami and Shaunaka Rishi to Sutta Goswami, they try to align the speaker back to the topic. 
because they are afraid. What if the speaker slips on saying something and then doesn't come back to what we want to hear? So there have been instances where Shaunaka Rishi has spoken to Suta Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj has spoken to Shukadev Goswami uh, saying, Oh, my dear Bhagavan, uh, I would be very interested now if you can uh, discuss in great detail about this topic or this king or this incident. So here, Hari Iti Aharitaha Yena Gajendro Mochito Grahat. By hearing that Hari, these two syllables were invoked by Gajendra, Parikshit Maharaj became very interested. So I'm reminded how Srila Prabhupada in the purport of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he uh, gives a very beautiful definition to the word eloquence. Srila Prabhupada says essential truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. So it's interesting how eloquent Shukadeva Goswami is that he can wrap up four chapters of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essential truth. He wraps it up concisely in half a verse, which of course goes in as a seed and Parikshit Maharaj uh, asks questions ahead. So now uh, we find the next verse, which is uh, text 31 and 32. So, <clears throat> so it's Sri Raja Uvacha. Raja Uvacha here, Parikshit Maharaj is speaking. Badaraya e tate shrotum ichamahe vayam hari yatha gajapatim graha grastam amu muchat tatkathasu mahat punyam dhanyam swastyanam shubham yatra yatra uttama shloko bhagavan giyate hari. Translation. King Parikshit said, my Lord Badarayani. Now, this is a very interesting invocation of Shukadev Goswami. Shukadev Goswami has different names invoked in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Shuka is the most prominent one. Vayasakhi is another. When Yamaraj talks about the 12 Mahajans, he says, Swayambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumara, Kapilo, Manu. Pralhado Janako Bhishmo Bali Vayasakhi Vayam. There the word Vayasakhi refers to Shukadev Goswami. Similarly, here Shukadev Goswami has been invoked by the word Badarayini. And there is a very deep significance of this address. Vyasadev is called as Badarayana. The father of Shukadev is called as Badarayana. The word Ayana means to take shelter, like Narayana. Hmm? The word Nara means man, one man. But the plural usage of the word man or men is not Nara, but Nara. And Ayana means to take shelter. So Vishnu is called Narayana because he who is the worthy shelter of humanity at large. Nara is Nara Samuha, the plural usage of the word Nara. And Ayana means to take shelter. I'll just quickly pause here. I am seeing a few comments on uh, Facebook saying that they are not able to hear. Can devotees quickly confirm if the sound is going through um, fine for devotees joining in from different uh, cities? Because if there is a if there is a uh, mistake with the sound connection, then we would like to see uh, what technical changes we can make. So Ajinkya Prabhu says, yes, you can hear. And we also hear it from other devotees that we are able to hear. Um, yeah, uh, somebody has written that uh, on Facebook you're able to hear, but not on the conference call. So for those devotees who have just joined us, this is just a quick uh, uh, announcement that uh, we tried it on the conference call, but I think the upper limit was reached. So we somehow could not join in ourselves. Uh, but if you're able to hear Facebook audio, then uh, please do kindly confirm so that we can continue. And I believe it is positive. I'm hearing it uh, from many devotees. Brinda Sundari Mataji has just confirmed. Our Janeshwar Gauranga Prabhu has joined in. And we also hear some confirmations coming in from Columbus and uh, also from other places. So, okay, that is positive. So we are discussing uh, text 31 and 32 for those who are joining in. Please kindly flip the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam as soon as you can so that we are all on board together. So in text 31, Shukadev Goswami has been addressed as Badarayani, and we're discussing the, the confidential reason behind that address. 
So Shukadev Goswami's father, Vyasadev, is called as Badarayana. And we were mentioning that Ayana means to take shelter. The word Narayana is he who is the ultimate worthy shelter of humanity at large. So Badara refers to the bare fall, the fruit, bare fruit. And traditionally, now of course we get it even on the traffic signals in India. But traditionally, it was a, a known thing that the bare fruit was found only in the middle of the forest, in the woods, inside. It was not so easily accessible. But now that all the trees have been cut down and the forests have come out, it's easier to access them. So when someone is known to have been very spiritual, very contemplative, very uh, introspective uh, on the spiritual path, they would like to go away from uh, the materialistic mundane uh, movements of uh, society and go and meditate inside in the woods, in the forests, very deep, dense forests so that they are not troubled by any uh, human intervention. They would naturally depend on Krishna for uh, water in the form of ponds or rivers or waterfalls or in the form of or food in the form of uh, dry leaves, which have naturally left their uh, branches or fruits. Uh, and, and living very simple, uh, being more um, uh, introspective and, and, and antarmuk, as they say, going deeper in one's own pursuit of spiritual realization. So Vyasadev, he compiled everything, but he was, even after compiling Srimad Bhagavatam, Vyasadev had this um, transcendental anxiety as to who is that person, who's that ray of Vishnu. So just the same anxiety that Bhaktivinoda Thakur had, who is that ray of Vishnu who would come and help him to take it uh, from one generation to another? The same anxiety Vyasadev had with respect to uh, the, the future. So Vyasadev went inside in the forest and taking shelter of the Badara trees, he would contemplate and cry and weep. Oh Krishna, please send me a son who will be so capable to understand uh, the uh, not just the knowledge, not just the jnana, but the vidyan, the experiential realized, digested knowledge, the, the essence, the substance of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and who is very capable and empowered to, tran uh, to transmit this knowledge with a devotional focus. So because Vyasadev prayed like that under the Badara Vrikshas, under the Badara trees, another name for Vyasadev is Badarayana. And the fulfillment of his austerity was the appearance of Shukadev. So Shukadev Goswami being the son of Vyasadev, who is Badarayana, is addressed as Badarayani. So whenever the word Badarayani is found, the, um, the inner intention of Maharaj Parikshit is, Oh, he who has appeared as the fulfillment of the crying tears, the prayerful tears of Vyasadev, he who is capable enough to understand and teach anything and everything. Oh, that Badarayani, please kindly uh, uproot this uh, uh, confusion, this doubt in my heart. So even when the Rasalila begins, the uh, Canto 10, chapter 29, text 1 begins. It is not Sri Shuka Uvacha. Although it is Shukadev Goswami speaking, the address there is Sri Badarayani Uvacha. Badarayani spoke. Bhagavan apita ratri shakabodhfulla mallika viksharantum manas chakre yoga maya mupashritaha. So, which Krishna danced with the gopis? Oh, Bhagavan. But who is speaking this? Badarayani. Can someone who is born as the fulfillment of the prayers and tears of Vyasadev after he has performed austerity in the middle of the forest, taking shelter of the, the canopy, the groves of the uh, Badara Briksha, the trees of the Badara fruit? Can such a fulfillment, uh, can such a child who has appeared to fulfill that inner longing of Vyasadev ever speak mundane romantic stories? The answer is no. Therefore, when he speaks the Rasalila, it is very authentic. So here also, Parikshit Maharaj has addressed Shukadev Goswami as Badarayani, as he who knows everything and therefore can speak about this pastime in great detail. So we see that here, Parikshit Maharaj's qualification is his inquisitiveness to hear. And Shukadev Goswami's qualification is the fact that he is empowered by his Gurujan. So it's interesting for us to note what are the qualities 
of the listener of Srimad Bhagavatam and what are the ideal qualities of the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam. So here is a list in Sanskrit of the uh, very wonderful qualities that a Shrota, it's called as the Shrota Vaishishtya, the speciality of the Shrota, the listener that uh, we generally we listen to Srimad Bhagavatam very passively. But uh, there is um, there is a proper culture of uh, all those who want to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So here are the qualities of the ideal listener. Yahastitva Abhimukham Pranamya Vidhivat Tyaktva Anyavada Harir Lilaha Shrotum Abhipsate Atinipunaha Namra Atha Kriptanjali Shishya Vishwasitaha Anu Chintana Paraha Prashne Anuraktaha Shuch Shuchir Nityam Krishna Janapriyaha Nigaditaha Shrota Sa Vai Vaktrubihi. So, what are the different qualities of the listener? First is Yaha Stitva Abhimukham Abhimukham and Pranamya Vidhivat that he should sit in front of the listener after offering obeisances. He should first offer obeisances to the Vyas, uh, the Vyas Asan. He should offer obeisances to, to the speaker who's who's been empowered by Krishna to become the via medium for the flow of Harikatha. That is the first. Second, uh, <clears throat> he should not talk during the Harikatha. Hmm? Which means he should give up all the other talks. He should not pick up a phone call. He should not have side conversations. He should not discuss other topics during the class. And he should have only one desire. Harer Lilaha Shrotum Adhipsate. He should have very, very uh, deep inclination and desire. Harer Lilaha Shrotum Abhipsate. Uh, Ipsita means desire. Abhipsate, very deep desire for Shrotum to hear Harer Lilaha, the pastimes of Sri Krishna. So this is the second one. The uh, third is Ati Nipunaha, which means he should be very sharp to hear about all the different points and different emotions expressed by the speaker. Ati Nipunaha. He should not be spaced out. Uh, he should not make the speaker repeat again and again because of his laziness and uh, lack of um, enthusiasm and eagerness to hear. This is very interesting. So one should uh, be very, very... Um, of course, if one needs clarification, one can always request. But as much as possible from one side, one should try to be very attentive. The fourth is Namraha. One should be very, very humble. Atha hmm? Kriptanjali, which means when one hears Harikatha also, it should be as if he is hearing with folded palms. So it may not be actually possible to hear Harikatha with folded palms. But at least when we hear our spiritual master speaking live, or we are hearing very senior devotees who are very mercifully speaking to us, we should sit with folded palms and listen as if Krishna himself is speaking and in the mood of a servant, we are listening. However, if you are busy writing notes, that is fine. Uh, we are, if you are taking down important um, take home lessons and instructions, uh, that is fine. We can always write. But in our heart, we should know that whatever the speaker is speaking, Krishna is speaking through his lotus lips just for me. The speaker, the, the listener should think that there is no one else in this audience except me. It is not that the speaker is speaking for everyone and I happen to be one among them. He's actually speaking to me and everyone else is just the audience hmm, who are uh, present in this conversation. So this is the next point. Uh, after, uh, after that, uh, Shishya, which means one should hear as if every speaker of Harikatha is one's Gurudev. <laughs> so one may have some issues with the speaker one may have had some conflicts or some um, difference of opinion, etc. But at least when we hear Harikatha, we should not think, oh, he's speaking this because we have had an issue in the past. So he's trying to make a point through his Vyaspeet, Vyasasan. One should not think like that. One should think that for this one hour, my Gurudev has entered his body. And whatever he's speaking, Srila Gurudev is speaking to me through his body. And so he's the microphone. So I respect Gurudev's microphone and Gurudev is speaking. So in that mood, the Shastra says, Shishya. And then the next point is 
विश्वसिता है विच मीन्स वन शुड हैव फेथ इन एवरीथिंग दैट हैज बीन स्पोकन एंड वन शुड नॉट अननेसेसरली गेट इन टू एन आर्ग्यूमेंटेटिव स्पिरिट देर आर सम हु एस्क क्वेश्चन either to check how much the speaker knows or to show the assembly how much they know mm. so this is uh, very very pratikul this is very unfavorable even if nectar is emanating through that uh, vyasasan uh, the speaker will the listener will not be able to tap into anything because according to shastra with this pravrutti is murkhata this is foolishness one acharya says that uh, <clears throat> if the disciple is a fool even if the spiritual master appears to be brahma still the disciple will not learn anything hmm? he will not learn anything and the example is you see bamboo bamboo will never give fruits nor will it give flowers someone will say well that is because the cloud is only giving water but the point is even if the cloud from tomorrow starts pouring nectar still the bamboo will not give fruit nor will it give flowers because the bamboo has decided i don't want to fructify so even if the spiritual master is uh, brahma the disciple will not learn anything muhrak hriday na chet the hriday of the shishya will not uh, fructify jadyapi guru milahi viranchi sam even if the spiritual master is brahma still the disciple will not gain if the argumentative spirit is there the next quality given is anuchintana paraha anuchintana paraha means <clears throat> one should have the mood to contemplate after the class all the points that have been made in the class this is a practice to so, to sit and hear hari katha doesn't get complete when the class ends actually it begins there to carry all those jewels the current of our parampara in the heart and to ponder upon it to contemplate upon it and to make a plan how to incorporate those points in our daily schedule and when one succeeds in incorporating those points of practice in our daily schedule that is when we can say he has successfully sat through that class otherwise we can sit through uh, even 5000 classes actually speaking our spiritual masters if you see they have given thousands and thousands of classes in the last 20 30 40 years this was actually not the culture traditionally if you see narad muni would meet his disciple only maybe once in his life because narad muni is not traveling in the same country he is not even traveling in the same planet he is moving he is uh, is moving in outer space so and you can't uh, keep in touch with your spiritual master if he is narad muni so the only time the disciple would meet narad muni is when not when the disciple goes to narad muni but when narad muni comes to the disciple and you never know when that will be so one meeting vyasadev one meeting pralad one meeting dhruva one meeting mrigari one meeting valmiki manigriv nalakuvel so many you see they getting uplifted and they are practicing with one hari katha so if we can tap into the heart of our gurudev even one class is enough but the fact that we have heard very passively we are sitting and we want to hear entertainment we are coming to get entertained we are coming to hear some nice uh, uh, exciting examples and some uh, discussions and some other jokes and other things so we want to entertain ourselves but the purpose of hari katha is to drill the heart with krishna seva vasana the desire that i want to serve krishna so because we are not learning as disciples our gurudev has been speaking for 40 years this is aha prabhu karo daya deho more pada chaya give me the pada chaya the shelter of your lotus feet that every class of yours i hear as if this is the only time i get to hear from you and then incorporate yeah so that was anuchintana paraha the the quality of the disciple so the next quality after that is prashne anurakta which means very desirous to ask questions very attached to asking questions which are relevant hmm? we say the spiritual master knows everything but that doesn't mean we go and ask him about the speed of uh, the movement of a certain planet or the movement of electrons in an atom or things like that that's not the question that we ask our spiritual master the spiritual master knows everything that krishna wants him to know so we should go and ask him uh, questions for jignyasu jignyasu shrayam uttamam 
तस्माद गुरुम प्रपद्येत जिज्ञासु श्रेयम उत्तमम we have to go and ask him questions that will help us on our path of bhakti and not discuss other things not discuss politics not discuss who did what that is just wasting our time wasting our gurudev's time and also wasting the golden opportunity to make advancement so we should ask the right questions so that is the next qualification of a listener prashne anuraktah hmm um then the next point is shuchir nityam which means the listener should try to maintain as much purity in character as possible that is the qualification to enter an assembly uh, of of devotees shuchi hi nityam one should try to keep physical purity and uh, spiritual purity in character then one is eligible to enter the the assembly however in kali yuga this may be uh, a tough task so therefore the flood gates have been opened by gaura nitai that everyone is welcome and you get purified here hmm? then the last quality is krishna jana priya nigaditah shrotas vai vaktra brihi vaktra uh, bihi which means uh, one should have a um, very affectionate relationship with devotees of krishna krishna jana priya one should uh, try to become very dear to the devotees or the devotees of shri krishna should be very dear to oneself so these are the qualities and we see maharaj parikshit having all these qualities <laughs> all these qualities hmm? now we'll briefly discuss uh, the pravakta vaishishtya which means the qualities that a ideal speaker should have so the sanskrit for that is bhagavan matir anapeksha suridah dineshu sa anukampa yah bahuda bodhana chaturah vakta sammanito munibihi the following are the qualities of an ideal speaker of shrimad bhagavatam bhagavan matihi which means he must be completely saturated in the thoughts of shri hari he cannot be a professional speaker in the sense that during the daytime and and during the other hours he is busy speaking other things doing other things and during that one hour of speaking he somehow assembles his notes puts in the points and speaks on the microphone that is not very ideal ideal is he who is always krishna conscious even when he is not on the vyasasan even if he is not on the microphone even if he is not in the presence of the devotees assembled devotees even if he is in the bathroom he is constantly chanting some songs or some verses or some some pastime he is absorbed bhagavan matihi and when that uh, absorbed person sits on the vyasasan and speaks then it drills the heart of the listener in a positive way so this is the first one that uh, mind must be absorbed the second is anapekshaha one should not speak hari katha hmm, to make money anapekshaha one should not speak hari katha with any desire only desire that oh if i speak hari katha everyone will be very impressed they will all become my fans huh? uh, they will take initiation from me or they will all uh, give me money or by speaking hari katha i can uh, gain this thing out of them that thing out of them this is not uh, ideal hmm? so we are talking about uh, the pravakta vaishishtya if we are using hari katha to gain something in this world oh that is uh, that is very abominable because hari katha is not uh, hari katha is not the branch at the end of which there is a fruit hari katha in itself is the fruit so here is an interesting thing that the speaker of hari katha should not expect anything but that doesn't mean the listener of hari katha keeps the speaker on the tip of his tolerance hmm? both sides are there it is very very important hmm? um, this because the context is there i am speaking uh, please don't think that i am trying to make a point uh, for myself or something like that this because the topic is there uh, we are making this point that the speaker of hari katha ideally when he gets invited or she gets invited the the travel may uh, may be funded but apart from that there are no uh, expectations you know he may he may uh, live wherever he may eat wherever hmm? and and he lives very simple and he is going there only uh, for uh, as per dukha dukhi he is not going there to speak hari katha to gain something for himself which means he is putting something higher than hari katha and he is using hari katha branch to get the fruit at the end but hari katha in itself is the fruit 
Harikatha is not a ladder to climb up and get something. And then when you get it, you kick the ladder aside. Harikatha and Harikirtan are in themselves the fruits. So if I am, if you are inviting me to do Kirtan in your home, hmm, and I am saying, Prabhu, I will come if uh, you give me so much money. Or I will come to speak if you give me so much money. This is the X amount. If you don't give me this X amount, I will not do Kirtan or I will not do Katha. Then what are we doing? We are using Hari Katha or Hari Kirtan as, um, as a branch to get the fruit of our uh, inner desires. On the other hand, it is described in Shastra. The, so the speaker or the singer should be like this. The server should be like this. On the other hand, the, uh, the Yajaman who is inviting, they should make sure that this Atiti, this Brahmana, this speaker or this singer is uh, very well fed, is very well kept, mm, is uh, very well respected and, and, uh, and can offer some dhoti or some kurta or some devotional books or traditionally they would offer some grains, some fruits, some reciprocation so that the, uh, the person is not implicated in karma. So here's the interesting thing. When the speaker is speaking Harikatha, and if the listener takes it to his heart and follows it in his real life, he doesn't have to give a single grain in donation because he is actually respecting the speaker by taking that principle in his heart and practicing. So that is the greatest donation he can give the speaker transformation of his heart. But if that is not happening to avoid karmic reaction, one should try to offer something. So it goes both ways. Now, when the, the Brahmana speaker or the singer or whoever gets this donation, he tries to give a portion of donation out of this donation. So he doesn't just keep the whole portion for himself. He may keep something for himself, live very simple and give out uh, in charity uh, through Go Seva or, or, or in other ways. He can give out in charity of what comes in. So when, when someone speaks Harikatha and through the donations, they are increasing their standard of living then that is not very high class. The, he, the speaker continues to live as simple as possible. Even if the donations increase, the standard of giving increases more than the standard of living. So in this way, then the Harikatha, Harikirtan will maintain their potency. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the second quality of the speaker, an apekshaha. Now the third quality of the speaker is uh, Suridaha and Dineshu Anukampaha, which means he should have a friendship with uh, those whom he's speaking to. He should not speak to them because of ulterior desires to settle scores, but he should have heart to heart friendship. And at the same time, Dineshu uh, Sa Anukampaha, which means he should have uh, Anukampa. He should have uh, some mercy. Oh, those who are listening, they may have some trouble in their life. They may have some concerns in their life and may this Harikatha service uh, help them get freed of that problem. So he should have genuine Anukampa. So the word Anukampa is also very interesting. The word Kampan in Sanskrit, uh, uh, Kampan means uh, in Sanskrit or in Hindi, the word Kampan means to shiver, to shake, Kampan Hona, you know, to have to tremble in the body. So Anu means to follow. So to see someone struggling and trembling in suffering and seeing that your heart resonates and you start trembling, that is called Anukampa. So mercy means you see somebody suffering and you start struggling and suffering in the same degree as them because out of love and affection, you are relating to them. That is Anukampa. So the speaker should have that. He should not speak. Uh, uh, he should speak with his heart to really sincerely help. The next quality of the speaker that is important in this context is uh, Bahuda Bodhana Chaturaha, which means he should have uh, <clears throat> uh, he should have different ways of explaining a certain thing. Bahuda Bodhana Chaturaha. He should be clever enough to reconcile different contradictory points. He should be clever enough to understand that the, the listener is not paying attention or the listener is not understanding a certain point. So therefore, to explain it in a certain way. We see the classic example of this as Narada Muni, when he speaks in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he sees that certain personalities are not understanding it the, the straighter way. Uh, Narada Muni has this very beautiful knack of telling stories, allegorical stories, 
he will uh, say allegorical stories about to Puranjan. The story of Puranjan is very interesting. We see Narad Muni building up a story, an allegorical story. Oh, there is a person. Uh, there is A. There is B. There is C. And he makes a certain point. So the person now through the story understands the philosophical point. If Narad Muni would have said, "Hey, you are the A. Your wife is the B. Your son is the C," that we are talking about then it may get maybe a little heavy on the person. There are some whose hearts are fertile completely, ready to take it so the speaker can speak straight. But for some, um, they may have to, uh, they, they, they may lose attention or they may have a different pravriti, a different uh, inclination. So the speaker should have the, the chaturya, the chaturta. He should have the intelligence and the, the, the wisdom be, being clever judge of time, place and circumstance to explain things in different ways. And finally, Vakta uh, Sammanitaha Munibihi. The speaker should be respected by other speakers of Srimad Bhagavatam, should be respected by other great personalities. So we see here that Parikshit Maharaj and Shukadev Goswami, they both have uh, uh, these qualities, the qualities of a listener and the qualities of a speaker. Both Parikshit Maharaj and Shukadev Goswami are, are a perfect match. And therefore, in text 32, we see that any such narration which happens between uh, such a wonderful combination of an exalted speaker and an exalted uh, listener, then it only brings in auspiciousness. There are four adjectives used. Uh, literature which has described Krishna. This is text 32 of the first chapter, Canto 8 that such descriptions describing Krishna between an exalted speaker like this and, uh, and a very qualified listener, then it is certainly great and it is uh, certainly very pure and glorious and auspicious. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur again comments here by saying tat kathasu mahat punyam dhanyam swasti swastiyayanam shubham that uh, this katha has been described as mahat punyam. Punyam means purifying or very pure and Mahat means uh, in, a, in a heightened uh, superlative uh, adjective usage. Indeed, very auspicious, very purifying, very pure, very pious like that. So Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says any Leela Katha of Krishna is Punyam. But very specifically in this case, Mahat Punyam is uh, the story of Gajendra. Indeed, very greatly purifying because this has come out as a question of Maharaj Parikshit. So during uh, this discussion, we also see in text uh, 33 that, uh, <clears throat> in fact, before we go to text 33, that text 32 is a very beautiful purport of Srila Prabhupada, which I don't want to, uh, I, I don't want to miss. So Prabhupada says in the purport, this is a very beautiful point. Prabhupada says the Krishna consciousness movement is spreading all over the world simply by describing Krishna. Very beautiful point. So the point here to be taken is the spreading of our movement should be based on description of Krishna. We don't want to collect people just by the numbers, by giving them what they want to hear, by giving them what they're searching for. But we want to describe Krishna in the sweetest way possible so that people get attracted on our terms, not that we attract people on their terms. Hmm? For expanding our movement, we don't want mass, we want class. We just don't want quantity, we want quality. So Prabhupada is saying the Krishna consciousness movement is spreading all over the world simply by describing Krishna. We have published many books, including the Chaitanya Charitamrita in 17 volumes, 400 pages each as well as Bhagavad Gita and the Nectar of Devotion. We are also publishing Srimad Bhagavatam in 60 volumes. Wherever a speaker holds discourses from these books and an audience hears them, this will create a good and auspicious situation. So we feel very happy that amidst the inauspicious situation of, uh, uh, of everyone being um, tethered to one corner of their house, we are all meeting together to speak about Krishna, to create uh, some auspicious good situation. I was hearing one devotee make a, a very wonderful uh, offering to Srila Prabhupada and he mentioned that one person mm, eats a bat and the whole world is suffering. <laughs> one person somewhere 
eats a bat and the whole world is suffering with this coronavirus. And the person said, um, if, if virus can spread on the power of one person's potency in a negative way, can't peace spread on the power of one person's purity? And the classic example of that is Prabhupada. Hmm? Coronavirus is the negative side of the spectrum, but the positive side of the spectrum is the bhajan pravriti, the, the intense desire to do bhajan. Prabhupada, one person sitting in one room of Radha Damodar temple, has influenced the whole world with the Karuna virus, where everyone in every street is chanting Hare Krishna. So look at the power potency of one pure devotee who is sincere. So Prabhupada said, we don't want one moon with many stars. We want many moons because Kali Yuga sky is very dark. Hmm? So therefore, the preaching of Krishna consciousness must be done very carefully by the members of the Krishna consciousness movement. Especially the sannyasis. This will create an auspicious atmosphere. So it's a very beautiful, um, very, very striking purport. Now we come to text 33. Where Sutta Goswami in the translation, I'll just read the translation to keep time. Sutta Goswami said, O Brahmanas, when Parikshit Maharaj, who was awaiting impending death, thus requested Shukadev Goswami to speak, Shukadev Goswami, encouraged by the king's words, offered respect to the king and spoke with great pleasure, great pleasure in the assembly of sages who desired to hear him. So the last line says, Muda Muninam Sadasi Isma Shrunvatam. So Shrunvatam means to hear. And the plural usage has been used, Muninam. The sages in plural usage, Muda, with great pleasure, hmm, they wanted to hear. So are we hearing Harikatha with that desire? We oftentimes look at our, uh, our watch, we look at the temple wall clock to see when will this end, when can I have Prasad. It's nice, Prasadam is also Krishna conscious, but uh, we want to have uh, the higher taste. <laughs> we want to feed our belly after our heart has been fed, our soul has been fed substantially. So we should hear uh, very attentively, muda, with pleasure. Hmm? Even Parikshit Maharaj, when he is asked by uh, Shukadev Goswami in the 10th canto, we find canto 10, chapter 12, text 43. Uh, Shukadev Goswami is speaking to Parikshit Maharaj that, Oh Rajan, this is day five in the conversation. And you have not eaten anything, you have not slept, you have not had anything. Are you doing okay? Should I continue? Parikshit Maharaj is saying, Oh, Shukadev Goswami, it is astonishing that you are saying that I have not drunk anything or eaten anything. Vayam hi dhanyatama loke, gurupi kshatra bandhava, vayam piba muhutvatta punyam krishna katha amrita. Parikshit Maharaj says to Shukadev Goswami that, My Lord, Oh, Shukadev Goswami, someone may think that I am having a very tough time in my life. That day after tomorrow, because Canto 10 was spoken on the fifth day. So day after tomorrow, Takshak will come and finish me. Someone may think that I am actually very unfortunate. But Parikshit Maharaj says, Vayam hi dhanyatama loke. Oh, in this world, my dear Lord, Shukadev Goswami, I am the most fortunate. So there is dhanya, there is dhanyatara and dhanyatama. Hmm? Dhanya means fortune. Dhanyatara means more fortune. And Dhanya Tama means most fortunate. So this is the uh, comparative and superlative degrees used as we use in English also. We say good, better, best. So why Dhanya, Dhanya Tara and Dhanya Tama? Parikshit Maharaj is saying, who is fortunate? The person who gets the association of a devotee is fortunate. Because now the tide, the sojourn of the soul, the journey, the, 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 uh, the trajectory, the projectile of his journey in this material world can get... Uh, um, changed the, the journey can change instead of going into another mother's womb there could be a 180 degree shift into the spiritual world so that is fortune someone who meets a devotee is fortune with faith but who is more fortunate he who humbly sits with him and hears Harikatha with a sense of urgency that he is more fortunate but who is most fortunate he who continuously listens to Harikatha seven days before his death Parikshit Maharaj says, My Lord, Vayam hi dhanyatama loke guropi kshatra bandhava vayam piba muhutvatta. I am not just drinking Srimad Bhagavatam Harikatha, but I am drinking it from your lotus lips after they have been relished in your heart. Therefore, 
I am most fortunate and this is Punyam Krishna Kathamritam. This Krishna Katha is Amrita, which means it takes away uh, the Maranam. It gives, one's, it gives one eternal life, Amrita, but it's also purifying. Hmm? Even if one doesn't go back home, back to God directly, Punya, one has a, 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 a purifying, it has a purifying effect on one's heart. So therefore here Muda, the sages are hearing with uh, so much uh, rapt attention. Now we enter chapter 2 of uh, Canto 8. This is the, the crisis of Gajendra. Gajendra. Just to put uh, again things in perspective, the first 19 verses of chapter 2, Canto 8, for those who are with us reading together, you can see that these 19 verses, they actually describe the scenic place of the Trikuta mountains where this pastime of Gajendra takes place. So someone may ask this question, that uh, what is the need of spending 19 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam on the scene? What is the point? Why do you want to uh, spend so much time describing a place? Why not just dive straight into Gajendra and then and you continue? 19 verses is too much description because you see in the first section of this chapter, the mountains are described, the ocean is described, the waterfall is described, the the denizens of heaven are described, the fruits and the flowers and the medicinal herbs are described, the singing of the birds and the animals present are described, the ponds and the, the clarity of water and the, puri the, the purity of the air being uh, uh, used for breathing there has been described. So there are a few reasons why this description is needed. First and foremost, this is the place where a, a, a pure devotee chanted helplessly the name of Krishna. So the place where a devotee calls out to Krishna even once helplessly, that place needs description first. Second, this place saw a systematic gradual uh, upliftment of consciousness where initially the description was that of Bhukti, where Gajendra with his friends was enjoying Bhukti. Then there was a battle of Shakti with the crocodile. Amidst this, there was an outpouring call of bhakti. And this concludes with crocodile's mukti. <laughs> so you see bhukti, shakti, mukti and bhakti, all of them found in this one scene. So it is very, very interesting. Also, this is a dham because the Supreme Lord appeared there. He left his abode and flew into this place. And that place where the Lord has come needs description. So therefore, we find in Canto 8, Chapter 4, uh, towards the end of this pastime, very specifically from text 17 to 24, for those who are taking notes, these numbers are very interesting. Why? Because the Supreme Lord says anyone who reads this section of the first uh, 19 verses, which describes the Trikuta and then continues reading the chapter. The Supreme Lord says anybody who remembers these peaks of the Trikuta mountain, Anybody who remembers uh, the bamboo plants and the cane plants described there, anybody who remembers the gardens and the caves described in those verses, anybody who remembers um, how the demigods would come and uh, frolic there, and anyone who remembers Gajendra's call, remembers Garuda, remembers the four um, signs on the hands of the Supreme Lord, remembers the appearance of Hari coming to the scene to save um, Gajendra, anyone who remembers um, the Srivatsa mark and the Kaustuba Mani and the milk ocean that has been described, the Lord has said only one thing. Those who remember this after waking up from their bed early in the morning, it is my promise to them that I will free them from all sinful reactions just by remembering this section. So sometimes we, what we do in the Bhagavatam is when we see there is a section of prayers, 40 verses of Brahma, Brahma Stuti. We skip the chapter. We say, oh, every verse is the same. My Lord, you are the greatest. You are the cause of everything. I'm insignificant. You are the creator, maintainer, destruction, the annihilator. Oh, every verse is the same. Skip. Next chapter. And then you see another chapter with the descriptions of names of family lineage and dynasty. Oh, what am I going to do with this? Skip. Then there is another chapter which begins 
<laughs> with descriptions of Trikuta Mountain and all the scenic description. Oh, skip. Let's just go straight to Gajendra and the Supreme Lord. But this is not the way. There is a proper prescription. Srimad Bhagavatam is an uh, is all in all medical process. So, hearing it methodically, hearing it through all of this is the proper way to cleanse the heart. It is needed for us. We have to hear through the names of all these kings. We have to hear through the descriptions of all these prayers and the descriptions of the Trikuta mountains. So first 19 verses describe the, the Trikuta mountain um, and, and this beautiful scenic place where Gajendra's pastime has been described. Just a side note, this pastime takes place in the heavenly planets. So the Trikuta mountain, three means three, and Kuta here means the peak. So the Trikuta, the mountainous ranges, which has many peaks of which three prominent peaks made out of silver, iron and gold have been described. That is the prominent scene. And this has been uh, described as the Trikuta mountain in heaven because the Ramayana describes that Hanuman also saw a Trikuta mountain in Lanka. And that is a different one from the Trikuta that has been described. This is not the Trikuta description in Lanka. So, <clears throat> so these verses are certainly very purifying. And for a Brajbasi, immediately the heart gets attracted to these descriptions because when he hears a mountain being described, he immediately thinks in his mind, if the Trikuta mountain is so beautiful, how beautiful is my Giriraj Govardhan? Hmm? If the water ponds and the rivers described in heaven are so beautiful, how beautiful is my Yamuna Rani? How beautiful are the ponds in Vrindavan? How beautiful is Gwal Pokhra and Pili Pokhra? The small Pukurs, the small ponds. And then bigger than that, uh, how beautiful are the Kunds, the Radha Kund, Sham Kund, Krishna Kund, Indra Kund, Airavat Kund, Gupta Kund, Brinda Kund, Naval Kund, Apsara Kund. Airavat Kund, Sudarshan Kund, Sankarshan Kund, all of these Kunds. Then if that is beautiful, how beautiful will be the Sarovar? Like Kusum Sarovar, Pavan Sarovar, Prem Sarovar, Man Sarovar. And then how beautiful will be the river like, like um, Yamuna and Manasi Ganga. Manasi Ganga was a river before, but now it's, it's pretty much a, a, a pond, a lake. So then when they uh, hear the descriptions of the fruits and flowers, immediately the Vasanta Ritu descriptions of the 21st chapter of the 10th canto. Uh, the mind will naturally go there because Shukdev Goswami says, Itham Sharat Swacha Jalam Padmakara Sugandina. That Vrindavan was so beautiful when Krishna was entering in the Venu Geet that the ponds are filled with lotus flowers and the breeze is blowing and the breeze is cold and the breeze is blowing very slowly. And the breeze is carrying the fragrance of all the different flowers. So Krishna can smell each flower's offering individually. Because if the wind blows very uh, heavily and fast, then there will be a mixing of fragrances. So every flower is not able to offer his own unique offering to Krishna. So the breeze is also facilitating the, the carrying of the service of every flower and every fruit and every tree and gulmalata. Gulmalata means the shrubs and the grass in Vrindavan. So when we read through these sections, we can also, we, uh, of course, we can meditate on the pastime, but the heart can naturally think of if heavenly description is so enchanting and beautiful, what to speak of the Vaikuntha description? And if Vaikuntha is so beautiful, what to speak of Krishna Loka, Dwaraka and Mathura? And if that is so beautiful, how beautiful is Goloka Vrindavan? And if Goloka Vrindavan is so beautiful, how beautiful are the groves that Brinda Devi arranges for the meeting of Radha and Krishna. So in this way, from a Brajbasi perspective, we can read these sections with, with great excitement. So now as the clock reads exact one hour, uh, we want to leave uh, this discussion not with a full stop, but with a comma, uh, with a very humble uh, homework for everyone. And that is to read the first 19 verses before tomorrow's class so that we all are on the same page as we discuss this very beautiful description from the lotus lips of Shukadev Goswami into the heart of Parikshit Maharaj. 
Srila Prabhupada has very lovingly given, given us all of this. So we offer our loving gratitude to Srila Prabhupada by studying these books together. That is how we actually say Jai Srila Prabhupada. Hmm? And then we can also dance and sing the Guru Arati, the, the Guru Puja. But if we just sing the Guru Puja, and if we don't implement the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, then we do make advancement, but not uh, as much as we can actually make by taking shelter of these books. So having said that, I am really very happy uh, and feel very privileged and fortunate to have the association of so many devotees joining in. Over 100 devotees are, uh, are joining us for this call. And, and, and please uh, keep uh, us in your prayers by giving us constant association day after day after day. Thanks to the, uh, the, the situation that we are all there together as a close-knit family, hearing and chanting in closed doors. Vancha kalpataru bhyascha kripa sindhu bhya evacha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha ananta koti bhakta brinda ki jaya. As far as tomorrow's time is concerned, it will still be the same starting from 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to 8 o'clock. Uh, and I think because of the upper limit of the call, we are not able to join through the audio call, but we can keep the same platform. We can have uh, the uh, Facebook um, audio call together and we can read and chant the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam for, uh, for next 10 days or so. Thank you so much, all the devotees. Thank you so much. Please forgive me if I'm making mistakes or if I'm saying something which is inappropriate and if there were statements made which are uh, practically implementable and inspiring on the path of bhakti, these are simply remnants from the Mahaprasadam plate of our Gurujan and I as the waiter, I am simply carrying that plate uh, uh, to, to your presence. So the chef is someone else and the waiter is someone else. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Hare Krishna.